So, we've learned how to 3D print. We figured out all the things we need to do to get a print from an object in a 3D modeling program to a real life object. We just need to do it. We need to make the object real. So for that, we use Cura. I'm gonna download this with you guys because I need to update it. You just go to Cura's website like I showed you before, and then you hit download for free. Get whatever operating system you have. I have Windows, so you click that, and then you click save file. I'm gonna just save it to my downloads. Cura downloads. You double click it, and let it do its setup business. So you'll get this page, which is the setup wizard. Hit next, you agree to the things, and you have it installed. Usually it'll set up shortcuts in the starting folder, you can just ignore all this, have it install everything it needs, and then it'll do its thing. All right, and once it's done installing, it'll run Ultimate Kukura when you hit finish. And there it is, it's loading. So sometimes this will pop up, you can just allow access, I allow. So you will get this screen. It says, welcome to Ultimate Kukura. Please follow these steps to set up Kura. All right, click get started. You agree to the disclaimer, hit next on that. It's just data. And then it tells you to sign into the Ultimaker platform. You don't have to, that's just their account thing. So you can ignore that and hit skip. And then you'll have add a networked printer or add a non-networked printer. This is where you add the 3D printers that we have. We have two different printers that you can use in this. That's the Monoprice and the Ender 3. We're gonna add the Ender 3 because it's a larger print area. So add a non-networked printer. If you wanna add the Ender 3, you scroll down to Creality, right there, and you hit the Ender 3 base, not Ender 3 Pro. Hit Ender 3, hit Next. All right, so you'll see it show up in the background. Don't mess with these settings. This is everything that's pre-programmed for the Ender 3. Hit Next. This is just their own updates skip on all these and then hit finish so you're given Cura when you have Cura you can move around here if you use a mouse it's a lot easier to use a mouse if you don't have a mouse it's fine but it's a lot easier when you do have a mouse so you can't really see what you're doing here right the first thing you want to do is you want to click on this bar right here my head's in the way click on this bar up here when you click on that you'll get basic settings. And you don't really want to use basic settings because if you use basic settings, you're going to be limited to some things, to a lot of things. So if you hit custom, you now have access to everything. So we need an object, right? We need to get something to print. So there's this really cool website called Thingiverse. Some of you may have heard of it, some of you may have not. You type in thingiverse.com you will show up here, a really cool website. We are going to make an articulated slug. This guy right here, little slug boy, really cute. You go down here, you go to thing files and you can download one of the two. We're gonna get articulated slug, hit download, save file. I'm just gonna put that on my desktop real quick. Save, all right. So, we open Cura back up, and then you hit this little button right here. And that'll let you open the file. Go to your desktop or wherever you saved it, hit Articulated Slug, and press Open. So now there's a little slug boy on your 3D printing bed. From here, you can click him, and then you can move him around wherever you want. You can move him over there, move him over there, or wherever. We're just gonna leave him near the center. So, I hit Slice. This will show up and it'll take 58 minutes. If I preview it, you're gonna see that it has layer lines and everything's all set up here. It has a skirt and everything's going on. So if I make myself invisible, we scroll down here, you can see all the layers. So on Cura, a thing that's really cool is you can actually scroll through the layer as it's going and then look through every path it's gonna take and then you can also go through each individual layer and see what it's gonna do. So this is the base layer. This is the very first layer that's gonna print. Then on top of that, it's gonna print the next and the next and the next, and then it keeps going and makes you your slug. However, there's some things we need to change over in the settings here. So if you wanna go back to the original view, you can just click on layer view or x-ray view, 
you do x-ray, you're gonna get this weird funky looking color. If you go to layer view, you'll be fine. So prepare, preview, and monitor. So we're gonna go to prepare, and there's a whole lot of settings that you can change here. So if you go to layer height, that's your base layer height, right? So say I wanna make it point 0.1, like I talked about before. You hit slice, now suddenly your print takes an hour and 39 minutes. But if you look, there's double the amount of layers and it'll end up looking a lot nicer. So if I go back and change it to 0.4 millimeters and I hit slice, now suddenly it's gonna take only 39 minutes, but it looks not that nice. Like if you look at the side, you can see all these layer lines and it's really kind of, won't end up looking very good. So if you leave that at 0.2, you're good. Let's go to prepare. So there's all these different settings. We talked about these. So walls, that's the wall thicknesses. Does two line counts, you can do three. We're good here. On top and bottom, there's a lot of more layers here. You usually want more top and bottom layers if you're going to be sanding it because it'll give a more thick base and thick top for you to sand through. Same with more walls. You can change those there. Infill, it's currently 20 and it's on cubic, but you can change that to grid or whatever. So like there's even more here than I went over. So if we just go to grid, cool. In material, you're gonna see the printing temperatures. A lot of temperatures change. So if you look at that screen before on the PowerPoint of all the different material temperatures you can print with, this is where you would change those numbers. However, for usual PLA 3D printing on our 3D printers, you're gonna wanna have this be at 210. Just from experience and using our printers, I know that this works well. Change this to 60. So 60 on the print bed, 210 on the nozzle, and that usually gives you nice crisp prints. Speed, usually you want this at 50 millimeters per second. On TPU, you're gonna wanna go a little slower, and on other things, you don't really wanna go higher than that because speed will make it look worse because it has to flow more, but sometimes it needs to go faster so that you can bridge gaps faster, like gaps between two islands, and other times it needs to go slower so that it can actually lay down the material like with TPU. Travel, you don't really have to bother about this. Cooling, neither with that. Support, if you don't have support on, nothing will show up, but if you click support, you can get everything here. So there's put it everywhere, and support overhang angle. There's nothing here that needs support, and I can always scale the object here, make it a little bigger. I can rotate it here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna position it badly. I'm gonna position it like that. So now, if I go to slice, we've got a bigger, not properly aligned slug. If I preview that, not only is it gonna take eight and a half hours, this is what it has to do. All the blue is support material, and you see how the layers are working differently now? The layers for the slug are now printed in a very different way. So if I go all the way down to the base, you can see that the base layer doesn't actually have the object on it at all. The base layer is just the support material. Next layer above that, that's the only little piece right there. That's the only little piece of the slug that's being printed. So that's gonna most likely fail and then it has to print the rest of it and then it makes your rest of the slug. And now this slug will be a lot weaker everywhere and potentially not even work. So if we go back to prepare, we put this at a normal angle, nice and flat. And we turn off supports because we don't need it. We're good there. So we slice it as is. This slug will now take two hours and 14 minutes because I made him a little bigger. Now, build plate adhesion, this is the one thing you have to change. Currently it's set to skirt, so if I preview it with a skirt, you'll see the lines that go around the print right there. And if I change it to brim, hit slice again, you're gonna see now that it sticks to it. It goes all the way down to the base layer and adheres to it. However, this is an articulating slug. So the issue with that is that now that there's a brim here, it's gonna kind of glue these layers together. And this slug will no longer become an articulating slug it'll become a stiff slug. And no one wants a stiff slug. So in that case, you would want to not print with a brim. And since this has a lot of surface area adhesion already, you don't really need to print with anything other than a skirt. Let's say just for kicks, we want to do a raft, All right? We hit slice again. Now you're going to see this raft layer show up. The very first layer 
you can see doesn't actually have any slug to it, right? And the next few layers above it don't have any slug either. This layer, this is the first base layer actually of the model you're printing. It is going to be adhered to this raft really well, just like it's adhered to this, but then you'd have to take the raft off. So this is not where you'd want to use a raft. You'd want to use a raft in a different way, a way where there's a lot less contact points, the contact points are a lot smaller, say it's just the eyeballs. You'll have this big raft layer that it adheres to. Say this is like a, a vase right here. So yeah, so we want to put that back to a skirt and then you don't have to mess with dual extrusion because we don't have any dual extrusion printers besides one, but that is its own monster and I will show that to you if you ever want to use it. So we have everything set up and we have everything good. We hit slice. We have our slice thing. A good thing to check every time you launch Cura is your layer height, your infill percentage, the temperature it's printing at, the speed it's printing at, and if you have support on and if there's adhesion. If you just go through that like a checklist, like, oh, 0 0.2, 20%, 210, 60, 50, no support because I don't need it, and then a skirt, you're good. Because sometimes, say, you're using one of our computers that we have free to use. The issue with that is that sometimes someone might be messing around and make a 0 0.05 millimeter thick layer that has 100% infill and is printing at 180 with no bed that's printing at one millimeter per second and has a raft that's as thick as a pancake. You wanna make sure that that doesn't happen. So always check these few, and then after you check those, you need to look at the slice itself. You need to verify. So it's always good to look at the first base layer, make sure the skirt's all good and your base layer has a lot of adhesion to your bed. And now this is where I can show tolerances. So if you look at how this is printing, Currently, it's printing just this little piece here inside this little piece here. If I go up, it starts making a channel. You see? It makes a little channel and there's nothing there. It's like a half pipe. And now, suddenly, on this layer, it starts making a bridge. It bridges that gap between the two. I'm going to change this to one color. You can always change this to material color, speed over here in color scheme so you can get a better view of what's going on. So as you can see, that's just free floating there. And since this printer can do bridges of short lengths, this is what's known as a bridge, it will do this successfully. So we're gonna turn on line type again, close this. And then if you look at this, as it goes, it makes the rod, so now it is, this piece right here on the left has an axle going through half of a circle, or most of a circle. And then this piece on the right will close around that circle, making it an impossible shape that you cannot build other than by using 3D printing. And then it finishes the print, and when you take this off the bed, since there's enough clearance and you accounted for enough tolerances in this little area here, it will move around and wiggle around like on these pictures, based on how it's designed. So, now you have this. When you plug in a USB drive, say like this, when you're done and you have it sliced, you would want to get the USB drive, or you would go to one of the people working there and say, hey, I am ready to do a print. And we'll go over this when you do the in-person workshop. So you take your thing, plug it in, and then that'll open up. And then this will say save to removable drive. When you click that, it'll save this file to either the micro SD card or the USB. And then from there, you plug it into the machine. So from here on out, the rest will be covered in the in-person workshop. Thank you, me from the past. I'll take it from here. So we're not actually going to stop here. Uh, we actually are going to go over Craftware next, and it's a little similar to Cura, but it's there's enough differences between the two programs that it requires another video. And due to people asking, I'm going to make one now. So let's go over there.